Welcome back all the fans and followers of space fiction. I just wanted to tell you the secret of traveling at the speed of light when I suddenly saw this. I couldn't believe my eyes that NASA had made the same mistake a second time. For the second time they preferred a large and seemingly cheap solution over the crew's safety. Yes, like the Starship, the Space Shuttle was originally built as a large and cheap solution. A large number of security risks were also neglected in its design. And also because of its design, 14 astronauts have already lost their lives. And why am I mentioning that in connection with the plan to send Starship to the Moon? Because the design of the Starship does not take into account the safety of the crew. And since I have already made a video about the dangers of Starship, let's look this time only at the problems connected to the Moon landing. The lunar version of Starship is quite different from the version designed for the Earth landing. Although this design is still in progress, it has more shortcomings than advantages. I have already mentioned the problem of landing on an uneven surface in the past. However, when landing on an unknown surface of the Moon, this problem is many times more important. Even the Apollo spacecraft missions did not land on a flat surface. Their tilt was from 4 to 11 degrees from the vertical line, with the most tilted being the landing module of the Apollo 15 spacecraft. All illustrations of the starships are showing it standing upright, sometimes even on the landing pad. Pure nonsense! There will be no landing area or horizontal terrain waiting for the starship on the moon. And because Starship is actually a tall tower with a high center of gravity, it will be in danger of collapsing even on a small tilt. Unlike the smaller landing modules, the Starship will need a much larger amount of fuel for both landing and departure. And an even bigger problem is that Starship must be able to bring at least half of the fuel in the tanks to the lunar surface. I'm not sure if the engineers recalculated correctly what power they would only need to land with so much fuel on board. It's true that SpaceX boasts of many successful landings of the Falcon rocket and several landings of the atmospheric Starship prototype. However, both the Falcon and the Starship had a minimum of fuel on board on landing and therefore a minimum load. And if the Starship is 10 times larger than other competing designs, it will be also 10 times heavier. So the landing on the surface of the Moon will be much more dangerous. The design of the lunar module of the Apollo spacecraft consisted of two separable parts. Landing module and ascending module. If the rocket engine fails during landing, it was enough for the crew to drop the landing part with legs and the cabin with the crew could safely fly back to the orbit of the moon with the help of its own engine. But Starship doesn't have that option. If one of the rocket engine explodes during landing, the entire ship will be destroyed. The crew will not be able to get rid of the damaged engine and even worse, the landing engines can very easily damage the tanks with fuel intended for takeoff. During landing, the pilot must be able to choose a suitable place to land. This rule generally applies not only to spacecrafts, but also to any other flying machines, like airplanes or helicopters. And with such a tall spaceship, it is certainly not possible to land either on a slope or between rocks. The pilots of the Apollo spacecraft had quite a good view of the landing site through the windows in the lunar module. 
at the moment of landing, the pilot was in a height of about 5 meters from the surface. But the Starship pilot will have no view of the moon's surface from his cockpit. He will be very high above the surface and the shape of the spaceship will not allow him to look from the windows towards the landing site. He will only have to rely on camera images. His perception of distances and dimensions will therefore be very distorted. In addition, the entire landing may fail if the landing camera is damaged. When I first saw that the Starship wanted to transport people and the cargo to the surface of the moon by elevator on its outside, I have to laugh. This is a bad joke. In the event of any malfunction, astronauts may remain trapped on the moon's surface. That means they will die very quickly. Each mechanical element of any spaceship will sooner or later be clogged with lunar dust and cease to function. Placing the entrance to the ship at the height of the 10-story building is the worst idea I've ever seen. Not to mention the risk of falling down. One of the reasons why NASA chose Starship to land on the moon is the argument that Starship is able to bring a larger cargo to the moon. This feature is to be used mainly when building a moon base. But is it really possible? As I mentioned, Starship itself will have trouble standing upright. And imagine what happens if a heavy and bulky cargo moves the Starship's center of gravity even further to the side. I don't know what SpaceX engineers are intending to do, but I see a scenario where a cargo spaceship happily lands on the surface of the moon but won't be able to unload the cargo because it will be in danger of tilting and collapsing. Starship is simply very unstable. Many parts of the Starship are useless or unnecessary. I don't understand how NASA could have selected a vehicle that contains so many unnecessary items for a mission to the moon. Why it has a covered surface similar to the Starship version designed to fly through the Earth's atmosphere? Why is its design so complicated that it requires a separate solution to lift the crew on board? In addition, the Starship must take off from the moon's surface not only with a load of rocks and crew, but also with landing engines, landing legs and all equipment that the crew in orbit will never use. When launching from the moon every kilogram counts, and every kilogram that takes off from the moon's surface will cost US taxpayers something. So do you really think that Starship is a cheap solution? On Earth, Starship will always launch from a well-prepared launch site. Each launch site always contains enough space for pressure and flames escaping from the engines. However, on the surface of the Moon, this space will be minimal in the current design. Therefore, when launching from the Moon, there is a great risk that the engines of the Starship itself will damage its lower part. The power of the engines is so strong that the pressure they create will not be able to escape fast enough into the surrounding area and can cause great damage to the structure of Starship or even worse, to its fuel tanks. Even if Starship will be able to land for the first time, it is very questionable whether it can do it repeatedly. The landing legs will be the most stressed part of the spaceship. They will require a comprehensive inspection and possibly replacement after each landing. Also, moon dust endangers all mechanical parts of the spaceship and even rocket engines can damage them with heat, pressure or blast. And finally the most important thing. Starship is designed as a reusable spaceship 
But will it really be the case with missions to the moon? After each space flight and after each landing, the Falcon rocket must be thoroughly inspected, cleaned and damaged parts either repaired or replaced. <laughs> On Earth. However, it is impossible for moon landing starship to land on Earth. Who will inspect, clean and repair it and where? How will NASA determine if it is even safe for another relanding? A repair of the starship in the moon's orbit is out of the question, so I don't think it's possible to reuse it. The starship destined for a lunar landing will never get back to Earth so that it can be repaired and prepared for the next flight. So is it really reusable? The proposed Starship design is very imperfect. It looks more like a nice picture than a functional model. I have no doubt that the Starship has a future as an unmanned cargo spacecraft. It has the potential to transport large amounts of cargo. But unless its design changes, it will never be safe for the crew. I really appreciate that Elon Musk is open to new ideas, but what I don't like is that the crew safety is not in the first place. Thank you for watching and the next time I fly by the Earth, I will send you another new video from the world of space fiction.